I like this filming location. I dig it. The lighting, it's working. Hey Cookie Monsters! So, I have not filmed in a very long time. I really do apologize. I know I've been posting nothing but Beauty and the Beast videos for like months. I am planning to do like a just review of everything I've read this year because it's just so much time has passed. But I have a really fun, exciting video today and I just knew, even though I really have no time, that I needed to film it because I have a huge unboxing video from Book Outlet. I was feeling a little bit of like a treat yourself kind of mood. I had been like collecting things in my cart for months and I really didn't expect to order now but then they had a sale and it wasn't as good as sometimes their sales can be because like for like Christmas or Black Friday or something like they can have like 30, 40, 50% off. So this was only 15% off but it also had free shipping which I calculated would have been like $16 I think for what I ordered. So I still saved a lot of money and there were things that I wanted to get. I was just like also I have a credit card. I'm tr I was trying to get to like a certain spending amount to get the points. I didn't really need to but I was just like just buy it. So I ordered it. But before we get to that giant box which it's 36 pounds. There was another box from Amazon that I want to unbox because I know what book it is. It's Strange the Dreamer. It comes out today. Today's Mar March 28th, the day I'm filming this. And I'm so excited. I did order the UK version too and I was thinking of like, I don't know, like doing an unboxing of the two of them, but the UK version is coming from the book depository. So it's not going to be here for at least like four or five days, probably closer to like a week or two. So I'm just going to unbox this one. Like I said, it's from Amazon. So it's the standard US version. I'm so excited. Also, speaking of Lainey Taylor, I have been wearing wishbone necklaces for like the last couple months on the daily and it makes me so happy. But here's the book! Oh! Oh my gosh, it's so pretty! This is my most anticipated read of the year. It's like not even normal. Do you see the shine? Do you see the butterflies? Do you see the blue and the yellow? And this? There's like, I think they're not even butterflies, they're moths. What am I saying? I knew it was moths. I don't know anything about really like the story itself because hell no, I'm not doing that to myself without the jacket really nice and gold and another moth over here so I'm really excited for this I'm hoping to be able to read it over the weekend I mean it's it's a hefty book but it's not I'm looking up at uh, daughter's book and bone it's about the size of like the first book it's not like gigantic but yeah most anticipated read of the year I can't wait for my UK version to come <sighs> can't wait for my heart to be broken but okay moving on to what this video is for my book outlet haul uh, we are on the floor because I don't think I can lift this on camera but we're gonna try okay this is the box. Do you guys see this? 36 pounds. I ordered 28 books, but some of them are box sets, so there is more than that. I think it's like 30, 36 or something. And I have no room for them. I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. I'm doing a pretty good job of clearing out my shelves slowly, but like, as in every couple books I read, I decide like, eh, I don't need to keep this one. So I will have room eventually, but right now I definitely don't have room for all of these. So they will need to go somewhere. But I'm so excited, like I, I know what books I ordered, I was like waiting for this every day. I'm just thinking about them and I'm like, ah! Okay, so the first book I got is Said the Shotgun to the Head, a poem by Saul Williams. And I got it because of Whitney. That's, that's why I got it. I don't really understand like what it is, it's just some like long poem. She featured it a lot in her Snapchat and it looked interesting and I saw it on there and I was like, yes. But it's, it's a poem, but it's like a book poem. I don't know, I hope I like it. Then we have the Obligatory Alice books. Oh, I like it. This is from Sterling Publishing. It looks like this. And then I've got another, yet another, Disney one, which is ridiculous. I have so many uh, animated Disney ones. And I have another, this is my third Alice in Wonderland coloring book. What's in the back? This looks like this. And this one's from, also from Sterling Children's Book. In the back, there's this like stickery thing holding it closed. What's in here? Oh my gosh! What the heck? I don't know how to show this to you guys, but like a giant poster. It's like a giant poster. I think I would actually take this out and color this in because I don't know if you guys can see it's like the Cheshire Cat and Alice and the Mad Hatter and the White Rabbit. <laughs> Sorry it's huge. And I, I would actually color this in and hang it up because like I don't know if I'll ne necessarily color in the entire like coloring part of the book but this poster is pretty darn cool. Not quite close. Oh well. Okay, and then here's another one. This is from Mini Classics, illustrated by Martina Pelusa. And it says Miles Kelly. So Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The book itself is this. What is, is this the book book? Yes, it is the book. Oh man, this is so cute. I don't know. Oh, and there's illustrations. I like this one. Oh shoot. Can you return to Book Outlet? Because I did not mean to order this. Ugh. 
I'm so dumb. Okay, so I wanted to read more um, Ellen Hopkins because I'd read all her books like back when I was in high school and then I stopped reading them for a while and a bunch came out that I didn't read. So I just recently read Traffic, which is the sequel to Tricks, and I loved it and I was like, oh, I should get back to her books. So I got Rumble. I forget already what this one's about. I read the synopsis. It is about, because all her books are really like about struggles that teenagers go through and like dark topics and addiction and abuse and like pressures that teens deal with. So this one's about faith and forgiveness. But I thought I bought Tilt, but I, I bought the audiobook. I don't like audiobooks. Should I give it a go or should I try to return it? I haven't read this one. Oh, it's inspired by teen characters introduced in her adult novel Triangles, which is one I didn't get because I read bad reviews of that one. I don't know what to do with this one. What should I do? I could just donate it, I guess, but um, I feel kind of stupid now. Okay, I got the Judy Bloom book in the unlikely event. This is like uh, an adult book that she just released a couple years ago, which I grew up on Judy Bloom books. Like y'all don't even know the fudge books, just as long as we're together starring Sally J. Friedman herself, Deanie, like all her books. Like I was, like just as long as we're together is my favorite book till I was like 12. So I was like, yes, when this book was announced, but then I never read it. So I saw it and I was like, I need it. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if people reviewed it well, but I do like Judy Bloom, and it's tripped down my memory lane even if I don't end up liking it. Then I got The Girls by Emma Klein. And I mean, I have heard mixed reviews about this. I think it's kind of like a thriller, which is weird because I don't like thrillers, but it just, I don't know. I was intrigued by what everyone was saying, so. And I think it's the cover too. Maybe it's not a thriller. Maybe I just assume it because I, I'm confusing it with another book. I think it's actually not now, now that I'm looking at it. I don't know what it's about. I just, I bought it. Here's the book. Now, if you want to trip down memory lane in terms of booktube, I got We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which was like the book that everyone was talking about in like 2014 or something, spring, summerish. Yeah, I didn't read it. Honestly, this has been in and out of my cart on Book Outlet for like three years. That was probably the year I started started buying things on book outlet like right when this started being big and I was like should I get it should I not get it everyone keeps saying there's a big twist somehow in the three years since it came out I have avoided finding out what exactly that twist is so yeah Let's, let's do it, you know? I got Swarm by Scott Westerfeld, Margot Lanigan, and Dipper Biancotti because this is the sequel to Zeros, which I included in one of my favorites of 2016. This came out like um, in the last year. I just haven't gotten to it. So I have to reread the first one, but I really liked that one. So I had to get the second one. Oh, that's so weird, guys. It is so weird. I was like, you know, my first one, I got a BA and it's an arc and it's signed. Maybe like, it would be so nice if my second one was signed. So I decided to just flip open the cover and it is signed. This is so cool. I have so many signed Scott Westerfeld books at this point, I feel like. Oh no, wait! I think I only have Afterworld signed. I don't think I actually have zero signed. Like, I don't make a big deal about signed books, but it's it's cool. You know, I didn't have to do anything special to get that one signed. This one I took out of the library like 150 years ago, and then I didn't read it because it's sad, and I wasn't in the mood of feeling sad. But it's All the Rage by Courtney Summers, which is about rape culture, about a girl who is I, I don't know, like, I don't have read it, obviously. Um, but I think she gets raped, and it's all about how like society reacts to her and how messed up our rape culture is and it sounds like so like up my alley in terms of like a topic that interests me but I also hear it's really really sad so I don't know like I'll have to be in the right frame of mind to read this oh my gosh I'm so excited about this one okay this is called so you've been publicly shamed by John Ronson I have been hearing about this for years the first person I heard talk about this was CGP Grey who's like my favorite youtuber after like Natalie Tran and I'm obsessed with his videos and I like my favorite podcast in the world is hello internet which he co-hosts with Brady Heron and in one of his audible ads he talked about this like eight Ages ago but I've heard a million other people speak about it since it's kind of like about how like with social media when someone makes a mistake it gets blown out of proportion and they get like publicly shamed to like a crazy degree like people who lose jobs over saying like one racist thing or something and I just feel like the more time goes by and I see things in social media the more I think about this topic so I really want to read this book it's just really interesting and there's a few examples of people that like I remember when it happened on social media and apparently they're in this book so like I don't know I just think it's gonna be a really interesting read so I can't wait a lot of people are coming to the audiobook but like I said, I don't do that. I mean, maybe I would for this because it's nonfiction, but yeah, I'm really excited for this one. So the next book is The Kiss of Deception, which is the first book in the Remnant Chronicles by Mary Pearson. And they had, I think, the second one also on there, but like I try to do now instead of buying like a full series is just buy the first one and then see. So I have heard good things about this. The next one is called The Heart of Betrayal. I don't know anything about it. It uh, looks kind of like... 
I don't know, magic, fantasy, olden days-ish, kick-ass girl. I can do that. Okay, so one booktuber who I've really gotten to love in the last year is Tasha from Fairy Drugs. She is, she's, I think, Andrea Dr Trash on Twitter. I love her. Okay, so she talked about When We Collided by Emery Lord in her, well, a bunch of times, but she talked about it in, like, her girly favorites, and it just sounded really good, and I just am really drawn to this, like, splattered paint cover. I don't actually remember what it's about anymore, but I did at some point. It just says it's about two people in a summer that changes their lives. That doesn't tell me anything, but I also got the start of Me and You, which, oh, it's so sad. Someone dies. Okay, so they're both like contemporaries and they have like a very similar like color scheme and it just, it just sounds good. And I just, I decided to take a leap of faith with this author, obviously, because it's two books by the same author. I don't know what if I hate them. And in the pretty springtime, summertime, beautifulness, color scheme, look thing, I got another book, not by the same author, but it looks so similar. Love and Gelato. Guys, if I had a time for every time I see a bookstagram picture with this book, in it. I would be a millionaire. This is by Jenna Evans Walsh and I know nothing about it. Literally nothing except that it's cute. A girl is spending the summer in Tuscany and then she gets an old journal from her mom and things happen and there's a guy and she's in Italy. Oh my gosh, I love it. Perfect. I'm going to Italy. I'm I, yeah, perfect. These three books need to get married and have babies. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Like why do I keep buying firsts in series? Because I don't know. I heard about this book a lot in the last year-ish. So it's called The Reader and it's by Tracy Chi. It's book one of C of Ink and Gold, which is, I guess, the series name. So I, I don't know why I did that, but it just, I heard it was good. I don't know what the reader is. I don't know what it means. I'm going to go with it's fantasy YA and it's like one of those societies where you're given a task and she's the reader, but I like, I have no idea what it's about. Oh, <gasps> Deckled Edges. Do you see? She lives her life on the run. Her dad is murdered. Someone is kidnapped. There's a book from her father that has clues. Not at all what I expected. Oh, well, I'm going to forget that synopsis by the time I end up reading it anyway. So speaking of, well, excluding that, book but going back to those summary reads speaking of summary reads i decided to buy this box set of morgan matson books so it is called detours do-overs and dares a morgan matson collection so got amy and rogers epic detour which i've read but i wanted to own and second chance summer which i have not read and since you've been gone which i have read and really really liked so i already own what book by her the newest one the unexpected everything which i have not yet read so i'm gonna go somehow figure out a way to put these together. Oh, here is that Alice book I was looking for. It's a Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition with an introduction by Charlie Lovett and I wanted it because I was like, look at the cat. Yes. Okay, first of all, I did not realize the first time, like, the, well, not the first time, the five, first 500 times that I looked at it on Book Outlet, like, it has three eyes, like three. Like, do you see? And then look at this. Do you, oh, I don't know what it's like on the inside. Oh my gosh. What? is this book i am obsessed like same it's got deckled edges and the inside is just like the normal drawings but like this cover makes my life okay here's the biggie and like the reason this box was so big i splurged on a thing i don't need nor do i have room for but they kept like they kept having it in stock and i was like you need it it is the complete collection of harry potter books in the new UK covers. I think that's what they are, unless I'm wrong. And they are soft cover, so like not really ideal. So these are like the UK slash Canada slash whatever covers. And they were only redesigned, I think like in the last like five-ish years. Okay, so this is the box. So it's got like Hogwarts and yep. And then this is that. I'm gonna show you the covers. They're so freaking cute. Like, I can't deal. That's the first book. That's the second book. First of all, this color. Do you see the Prisoner of Azkaban? But like, the Patronus? Ugh, it's perfect. The beautiful dragon, Hungarian Horntail, and our adorable little trio on the back. Order of the Phoenix. It's so weird. Order of the Phoenix is always blue in my mind, but now it's like red. Then we've got Half-Blood Prince, which has this really intense cave scene from the end. Oh my gosh, guys. First of all, like one of the best scenes ever. This is all the way at the end of the forest scene. But like, do you see precious little Harry? He's so small. Do you see how cute he is? And that is the box set. 
So I'm really excited to add this to my collection because more Harry Potter is always good. And also like I was reading the first book to my niece and it was like an American first edition. I don't know if it changed after that, but they like Americanized it and it like bothers me. Even though that's how I read them when I was a kid, I kind of like having the British version too. Okay, I need to explain myself because why did I buy Empire of Storms? <laughs> but Sarah did not. Let me explain. Honestly, like, I can't. Why? Okay, so here's the thing. Like, I used to love the Throne of Glass series, and then I read Court of Thrones and Roses and was like, I do not like this. And then I tried to reread Throne of Glass because I had only read the first three books in the novellas. So I was like, I need to get on Queen of Shadows. It's been too long. And I was only two books into my reread, and I was just, like, not interested anymore. So I was like, I gave up on this series, and it's like, the books are all the way at the top of my shelf. Like, I'm still considering, like, what I'm going to do with them. Am I going to continue my reread? I really want to, but at the same time, I don't want to. Like, I kind of just want to, like, complete it. So that's kind of why I bought it. I was like, you know what? Maybe I will finish my reread and I'll finally get to Queen of Shadows and Empire Storms. And then if I don't like it, I'll just give the whole series away to many. Like, I don't know. I didn't really need to buy it, but like for completeness sake, in case I do like hop back on the Throne of Glass bandwagon, I have the book. It's really big. And I mean, I'm like, I'm pretty into the, I'm always into the covers, but I don't know why I bought this. I hear no one even likes this one. Three books left, but the, oh my God. Gosh, you don't even know guys the last two books are gigantic so I got room by Emma Don Donoghue is that how you say it? I've been meaning to read this for years and I was about to say do I own it? I don't think I own it. Maybe it has something that's very similar to it, that's why. I just, obviously, everyone says this is really good. Some people don't like it because I know the narration is from the child's point of view. I know the movie's really good, but I'm very like, if a movie gets really big but it's based on a book, I'm always like, no, no, you have to read the book first. And sometimes I don't, but I would like to, so I got it. Okay, this is the new A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin Illustrated Edition. It came out in the last, like, set six, eight months. Oh my gosh, I thought this was like a guide to the series, but I know that's a world of ice and fire, so... No, it's literally just the first book, but they put illustrations in it following, I guess, the Harry Potter thing. When I do my reread, when, if ever, The Winds of Winter comes out, I'm going to read it from this version because it's so pretty. It's just like, like this is Ned. It's like, it's got amazing illustrations and it's just so cool. It's got like an amazing binding. Like, I think it's just a good thing to add to my collection. Some of them are in color. Look at that. Like, I don't know, I just think it's so cool. Okay, we're up to the last book and I've been talking about it for like five minutes before I realized I wasn't saying anything that actual. So I'm gonna start this over again. I was like, suddenly was like, I should get into Robin Hobbs books. So I thought I was getting like the first, but this is like not at all the first. This book came out like a couple years ago and the first book came out like 20 years ago, but it is the first of its trilogy. So I'm gonna hold on to this, but I think I will go back and read the first first. Um, so this is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb. It's gigantic. It's book one of the Fits in the Fool trilogy, but now that I'm actually doing my research, cause I'm dumb, her original first year trilogy is Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, Assassin's Quest. And then this series is like years later, but it's like the same characters and I don't necessarily think you need to read them in order, but now that I'm thinking about it, I might go back and read that one. So now I'm like, why did I just buy this one? I think it was really cheap too. There are books everywhere, but thank you for joining me on this very, very long haul. Get it? How many books did I actually get? One, two, three, four, 33. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought and which of these you want me to read first. Yeah, how have you guys been? Thanks for watching. Bye. I tried. <laughs>